I'd like to say shalom, giving all praises to Yahweh, the Father, Ra, Yahweh Shai, the Son. Also give a double honor to the elders of GMS. Honors to the Akim. Peace and blessings to brothers and sisters that listen to Hopeful Elect. You know what we out here to do? Prophesy against Babylon and to wake up the elect or the one third of you Negroes, Hispanics, and you Native Americans, man. Okay, and yes, we're supposed to prophesy against the white man in his kingdom, man. Okay? That's our main job, man. It's not only to gather the elect, but to warn you of what's about to come and to condemn the wicked. Okay, and who's the wicked? You looking at him? Esau, Edom, the modern day Caucasian. And this is his kingdom, man. And his kingdom is going to go out with fire because how he built it was unjust. Rape, robbery, and murder. Okay, and who am I speaking out mainly against IUIC, man? Okay, you're going to make a video saying not to get on Esau. That's wicked, man. Okay, and you guys perverted the doctrine. And pretty much, like other brothers said, that's your third strike. Okay? One of the other your false doctrines is the mark of the beast is not the chip. That's another false doctrine, man. Okay, and another false doctrine is what? The name of the Lord don't matter. Okay? Now your new doctrine is don't say nothing about against Esau, man. When this whole Bible is against Esau, man. The scripture says he's the end of the world. And Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it, man. So now you gotta tell Israel who they are, you gotta tell them who their enemy is. Come on, man, that's just crazy. But it shows you that you guys sold out. Read the precept, Proverbs 30 and 4. Unbelievable, man, but you know, the Most High is separating his men from the phonies, man. If any of you guys still following that dude, you're insane, man. You better get out of there. You better run. Okay? Because he's going to cause y'all to perish, man. This is not about man pleasing, man. Okay? The most high set of teachers out here, man. And the scripture said if the blind lead the blind, they both shall fall in the ditch. So it's not only these pork chop eating preachers are the devil. You got niggas who know they're Israelites are the devil too, man. Teaching that you don't got to get on Esau. You have to get on Esau. He's the main adversary of the children of Israel. All these nations are. But he's the chief one. He's the wicked, man. Proverbs 30 and 4. All this homosexuality, adultery, pedophilia, bestiality. Who the hell is behind all that, man? Who's behind the world being out of course, man? This is a question for you guys. Who's the one who put the children of Israel in captivity? Who's the one who gave us guns and drugs? Who's the one who promotes this negative music that controls the movie and the music industry, man? Okay? Who's the one that gave these women rights to be over the man? Feminism, man. Who's the one that created these prison systems, man? Who did that? Who's the one that started all these world wars? But don't talk about it. Anyway. Let me save this article for next week. Look like I'm going to have to go on, in on these guys this week, man. You get a first reset. Proverbs 30 and 4. Make sure we going. Good. Proverbs 30, verse 4. It says, No, it's Proverbs 30 and 5. It says, Every word of the Most High is pure. Let me read that again. That's the point I really want to bring out. Proverbs 30 and 5. 
Every word of the Most High is pure, man. Every word, man. Yahweh Shai said he comes in a volume of the book. So you can't extract what is not profitable to you. This is not about any one of us, man. It's about the truth, man. And the scripture says people were gonna, were gonna get offended. The Lord said offenses must come. But woe unto you the offensive coming. Okay, you gotta publish the entire book. Alright? And the time period we're living in now is what prophecy, man? The time the time period we're living in now is Esau's downfall, man. His cesspool of wickedness being cast down by Yahweh Shimi Al Shah, man. He's the beast in the book of Revelations, man. That's gonna make war with the kings of the east and bring forth the third world's war. He's the one that's gonna try to fight the Lord when he makes the second coming. Esau, man. He's the one who has his foot on the children of Israel's neck. Okay? So I'm gonna read it again. Proverbs 30 and 4. Every word of the Most High is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in them. And there you go. And that's our shield. Our shield is not in the government or guns. Our shield is in the Most High and His Son. And that shield also is in the name. Which is another false doctrine that you guys teach. That the name of the Most High don't matter. The name of the Most High for brothers and sisters that don't know is Yahweh, man. And His Son's name is Yahweh Shai. And they're going to rain judgment on this earth. Okay? And the main judgment is coming to America. Jacob's trouble. The time of martial law. The time of the chip. The time of the famine. Okay? When the economy about to collapse, man. Racial tension is going to rise. And then you're going to have martial law. Then you're also going to have the third world's war. You're also going to have famine. Alright? Whatever the... Um, planned terrorist attack they got planned out here man just like you had this false flag this damn hollywood movie that happened in times square this week about some crash that injured 20 people that whole thing was staged man because they're about to do something major and big and their main adversaries of the new world order you so-called negro hispanics and you native americans and you got to let jake know whether they here or for there because the scripture says i'm gonna read it one more time Proverbs 30 and 4. Every word of the Most High is pure, man. Okay? There's nothing foul about this book, man. He's a shield to them that put their trust in him. I'm going to read this scripture. Proverbs 18 and 10. Proverbs 18 and 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous running into it and is safe. You have to know the name of the Lord. And that name is not Jesus. Okay? That's a Greek title, man. The name is Yahweh Shai. He saves or he delivers. That's his Hebrew name. Because he was a Hebrew, man. Okay? There was no letter J until what? The 1600s? So how could that be a name? Huh? Is that again? A pen? No, 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 no pen. You doing good? Alright. Yeah, I'm good, I'm good. Every word of the Most High is pure, man. Every word, man. I'm going to read this again. Proverbs 18 and 10. It's like I lost my train of thought. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run it into it and it's safe. So the name of the Most High matters. So that's another strike, man. The IUIC teacher, man. A lie, man. Okay, that you don't got to call on the name. That's a lie, man. Part of coming back to your heritage is knowing the name. Okay? Israel always knew the name when they were in trouble. And when they call upon the name of the Lord, he sent a deliverer. Matter of fact, let me prove that. Nehemiah chapter 13. So we got to mark you guys, man, because you got a lot of, you know, brothers and sisters waking up, and they got to know who the wolves are. All right? You guys mingling the scriptures, man. And 
that dude, that dude, <laughs> that dude made that waxing worse and worse, man. You, that that whole thing he said, you don't gotta talk about Esau. That just proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that he's sold out. That he's underneath the 501 C3 charter, man. Just like that nigga comfy, man. But you don't even see him anymore. Man. Nehemiah chapter 13. Is it 13? Let me see. Satan tried his best to stop me from coming out here, man. But this word, man, that public transportation was crazy. But that's these demons that we got to battle. All right? Let me see. Uh, let me see. One second, I pulled a script in a while. There we go. Nehemiah 9.27. It says, Therefore thou deliverest them in the hand of their enemies. Who are our enemies? These other nations, man. The chief being the children of Edom. Matter of fact, before I read Nehemiah 9, let me read Psalms 83. To prove to the children of Israel who our enemies are, man. Okay, Psalms 83. Psalms 83. Keep not thou silence. Oh, come on. That cuts them guys, man. I'm going to read it again. It says, Keep thou not silence, O Most High. Hold not thy peace, and be not still, O power. For, Lord, thine enemies make a tumult, and they hate thee, have lifted up their head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people, and consulted against thy hidden ones. Shub says, Keep not silence. Man. King David is praying in the spirit. To keep not silence against our enemies. Man. It says, They have said, Come, let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against me. Who the confederate against me? Who coming together? Make a conglomerate against the children of Israel. Let's see who the first nation is. The Tabernacles of Edom. Come on, man. Who's Edom? Adawam, red. Because that's what the white man is, because his blood shows forth through his skin. He doesn't have any pigment. He doesn't have any melanin, man. Okay, Edom is the nation that came out of Esau. Our wicked brother. So it says what? The Tabernacles of Edom. So I'm going to jump back to Nehemiah. Okay? The first nation it mentioned was the children of Edom. We get it. Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 27. Therefore thou deliverest them into the hand of their enemies. So who delivered us into the hand of our enemies? Hold on one second here.
Nehemiah chapter 9 verse 27 Therefore thou deliverest them into the hand of their enemies Who delivers into the hand of our enemies? Yahweh, man, the Most High, man Okay Who's our enemies? These other nations The chief one I just read in Psalms the 83rd chapter The tabernacles of Edom Okay It says Who vexed them And in the time Of their trouble When they cried unto thee Cried unto what? Cried unto his name, man. Okay? That's what I just read. Proverbs 18 and 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and is safe, man. Okay? And right now we're crying unto the most high. By coming out on the highways and hedges. In the chief place of concourse. <laughs> okay? Out here in, in front of the people, man, not doing the work deceitfully, man. You got to come out here in the open, man. Okay, your face got to be seen. So right now we're crying unto the Most High. And I'm going to read on. Thou therefore deliverest them into the hand of their enemies who vex them and unto their, and in their time of their trouble, which the time of Jacob's trouble is coming. Well, you Negroes and Hispanics, y'all going to be put in concentration camps, man. When they set up this new world order, man. They gonna bring hell on earth when you read Revelation the 12th chapter. When they bring them Gurgle troopers out here. When our economy crashes. Read on. It says, when they cried unto thee, thou heardest them from heaven. And according to thy manifold mercies, thou gavest them saviors. Who saved them out of the hand of their enemies. So the Most High said, Moses. He sent Samson, he sent David, okay? Even wicked ass Saul at one point, man. Okay? Read the book of Judges. He sent different men to deliver the children of Israel in time of trouble. But the main savior is Yahweh Shai, okay? What the world ignorant called Jesus Christ, man. And he's coming back with the clouds of heaven to deliver his elect. And you could only cry unto him if you know his name, man. Okay, so you can't take the doctrine, you can't take out this and take out that. You gotta bring this word out, man, as it is written, man. See, but what it is, a lot of them guys, they comfortable, man. And I'm gonna get scriptures on that too. We pull another precept. Second Timothy chapter 3 verse 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 it says all scripture I'm going to read it again 2 Timothy 3 16 all scripture man so even the ones getting on Esau alright which is a whole bunch so it says all scripture is given by inspiration of the most high and it's profitable for reproof, you no, know, it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, man. So you have the commandments, which you guys profess, okay? And you also have what? Reproof and correction. Who has to be reproved? Two thirds, man. Even a one third, we have to be reproved before we came into this knowledge. Esau and these other nations got to be reproved. America, a.k.a. Babylon, has to be reproved, man. Before the judgment comes down, man. So I'm going to read it again. 2 Timothy 3.16 All scripture is given by inspiration of the Most High and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, 
for instruction and in righteousness, man. So we got to reprove these other nations, man. The scripture says all scripture. So you can't omit anything. All right? That's what I'm going to read here. Revelation chapter 22, verse 14. Revelation 22, verse 14. Is it 14? No, 18. Revelation 22, 18. Agents, agents, agents. It says, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, the Most High shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book, man. So you can't add nothing onto this word, man. You just added something onto this word, man. And any one of these guys who preach false doctrine, that's adding onto the scriptures, man. Oh, Edomites gonna make it. You added onto the word. It's five Edomites that's gonna reject their fathers. That's adding onto the scriptures, man. Okay. Cornelius is an Edomite. That's adding on to the scriptures, man. The scripture tell you only Israel is going to be saved, man. The children of Israel is the only nation that's promised salvation. Because we're the only people that receive the covenant. These other nations have received the covenant. Alright? And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, the Most High shall take away his part of the book of life. And out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. So meaning what? He's going to take away what? And your right to salvation. Which means when Yahweh Shai come back, he's not going to know you. Alright? So you got dudes out there taking out from the book and adding on to the book, man. Say Esau, uh, Edomite's not going to be done away with. Don't speak out against Edom. That's wicked, man. That's perverting the doctrine, man. That's why the Lord said what? Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. People are just, woo wee. Matthew 7, 21. Okay. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. That's what Yahweh Shai said. Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, man. So yeah, you got them guys out there professing, look like they're professing godliness. Got the garments on. Saying, read! Right? And bringing a word out. But said what? Not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Because why? But they perverted the doctrine. And that's what? That's called blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. And the Lord said that would not be forgiven. That's an un unforgivable sin. All right. It says, um, "Shall enter into the kingdom of the most, a kingdom of heaven." But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Now, what's the will of the Most High? To believe on His Son and to gather the elect. That's the will of the Heavenly Father, man. For you to believe on Yahweh Shai and to gather His elect, man. And to preach this word in sincerity and in truth. Okay? That's the will of the Heavenly Father. Man. And the will of the Most High is also to what? To condemn Esau. And I'm going to get scriptures on that later on. Micah. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1.
mocking those that cause division according to these scriptures, man. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1. Habakkuk 2 and 1. <clears throat> I will stand upon my watch. <clears throat> Habakkuk 2 and 1. I will stand upon my watch and will set upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. I'm going to read that one more time. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1. So we standing on our watch right now, man. In front of what? In front of these other nations? In front of Jake? Okay. This is standing upon your watch, man. Coming out here in the public, man. You got to look like a fool for your how I say, man. My God, it says, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. I will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved, man. So we got to stand on our watch, man. But what do we do when we stand upon our watch? Ezekiel chapter 9 verse 2. I'm going to read it. Okay, we have to stand upon our watch, man. We have to get the blood off our hands. And we got to warn Israel of all these things I just talked about. Man. Read Ezekiel chapter 9 verse 2. Ezekiel chapter 9 verse 2. Ezekiel 9 and 4. And the Lord said unto me, go through the midst of the city. So we standing upon our watch, man. What we're supposed to do? Go through the midst of the city. Through the midst of Jerusalem, which wherever you Negroes, Hispanics, and you Native Americans are. Man. That's what we're supposed to do. And set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof, man. What's the sum of the abominations? Homosexuality. Adultery, transgender. Now you got pedophilia, man. Which they trying to sneak in there, man. But you got this Mark Weiner dude who just got caught, man. You had that whole Pizzagate scandal down in Washington, D.C., man. Comet Pizza Ring. See, these are the abominations that's done in the midst thereof. Women being over men. Wicked, man. That whole feminism is wicked, man. And it's against the laws of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai. So the scripture says to mark them that sigh and cry, which is what? The one third. The elect men, man. Starting with the 144,000, man. So we're supposed to stand upon our watch and mark those men, man. Okay, with what? This knowledge, man. Having this knowledge in your forehead. Part of the knowledge is knowing the name. Part of the knowledge is condemning Edom. Part of the knowledge is the prophecies. Part of the knowledge is the commandments. Part of the knowledge is faith. Okay? Which is what? The volume of this book. And the others, he said, in my hearing, go we after. Oh, oh, no, we read up. He said, To the midst of Jerusalem and set a mark upon the foreheads of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And to the others he said in my hearing, for we after him through the city and smite, let not your eyes fear, neither have you pity. So the only ones that's going to be saved from the oncoming destruction is the elect men. Men, women, children, friends of the prophets that believe. Okay? Which that makes up the one third. And everything else is going to be devoured by fire, man. Thermonuclear fire. That's coming to this society, man. When America what? When they further attack Syria, Iran, okay, it's going to be America and Israel versus the whole world. Because even NATO at one point is going to turn against America. That's in a prophecy. The beast shall hate the war. Which that's another thing that you guys really speak on. Okay? A lot of these groups, man, they're comfortable, man. 
scripture says you're supposed to stand upon your watch. You're supposed to warn Israel, man. Unbelievable, man. I'm going to read it. These are all basic scriptures, man. You see? I'm going to read it. Jeremiah 28 and 8. So you guys that's in there, y'all really are zombies. Okay? Because this whole Bible condemns Edom, man. And the scripture says, every word of the Heavenly Father is pure. Jeremiah 28 and 8. says what sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. You see in times past when people like that will walk past, especially when the brother Hana used to be here, that was in the past, years ago, we used to just get on random people like that. But we fast that now man. You see what I'm saying? This word is out here man. This truth has already spread. So technically the blood is off our hand. These Jakes already know this about this truth, man. You got niggas in the celebrity world that know. So if you want to be a homosexual or doing these wicked ass things, that's on you, man. Alright? Read it. Jeremiah 28 and 8. It says, The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries, against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. We're supposed to prophesy against Babylon. Who's the king of Babylon? Esau, man. Esau, man. Edom, man. He's the one that's in control of this empire, man. Okay? That's what I'm going to read this one more precept and I'm going to jump to the next point, man. Matter of fact, let me read John attention. Matter of fact, let me get Jeremiah 15. Jeremiah chapter 50 verse 1. It says the word that the Lord spake against Babylon, man. When Jeremiah wrote this, this is he talking about ancient Babylon. This is talking about that future Babylon. What it says in Isaiah the 47 chapter, the daughter of Babylon, who ought to be destroyed. Man. So it says what Jeremiah chapter 50 verse 1. The word that the Lord spake against Babylon, against the land of the Chaldees, by Jeremiah the prophet. So, I'm going to read it again. Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 1. The word that the Lord spake against Babylon, man. So the Most High spake against Babylon, and against the land of the Chaldees, by Jeremiah the prophet. So the Most High used his men to speak out against kingdoms, man. Just like he used Moses to condemn Pharaoh, man. Just like he used Daniel to condemn Nebuchadnezzar's son. And let him know his time was up, man. And just like the Mosai has his prophets out here to condemn Esau. And let him know he's on borrowed time. Okay? Because the elect is almost sealed. That's why this truth is in, uh, got buzzed in um, South Africa, Israelite foreigners. East Africa, Kenya. In Europe, man. And in other places that we don't know, South America. 
the northern kingdom is waking up. The Hispanic tribes, man. Okay. Read on. It says, Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 1. The word that the Lord spake against Babylon, against the land of the Chaldeans, by Jeremiah the prophet. This is what he said, verse 2. Declare ye among the nations and publish. So that cuts you guys, man. You're supposed to do what? Declare ye among the nations and publish. Set up a standard. What's the standard? The Bible, man. The word of truth. The comforter. Okay, the bread of life. All right, this is the standard. This is our foundation. It says, declare ye among the nations and publish. Set up a standard. Publish and conceal not. So we ain't supposed to be taking nothing out of this book, man. Because it don't uh, suit your 501c3 agenda. Because these devils paid you off. So you can't speak on certain things in your congregation, man. Because it's been known that you guys sold out, man. You took that Judas purse. Okay? So you read you you read the, the doctrine, man. Okay, a more Christian friendly doctrine, man. And the Lord gonna destroy y'all, man. The most high gonna destroy y'all, man. So the people that's in that congregation, y'all better get out. Y'all better get out, man. Read on, it says, Declare ye among the nations and publish, set up a standard, publish and conceal not. Say Babylon is taken. Bell is confounded, which are these gods, man, that they worship, man. Chief God in this society is Satan, Baphomet. That's why they wanted to raise that temple of Baal over there in Times Square. Which they resurrected over there in London as well. Because why? These people are sheep and cattle and they're going to sacrifice them. Just like 9-11 was a sacrifice, man. Conceal not. Babylon is taken. Bell is confounded. Merodach is broken in pieces. Her idols are confounded. Her images are broken in pieces, man. And, and this goes into World War III. All right, I'm going to read another precept. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20. Okay. Fill your place. Oh, my God. Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20. Isaiah 8 and 20, it says, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, the Bible, if you're not speaking according to this word, I'm going to read, it is because there is no light in them, there's no truth in them, guys, man. okay, they have ulterior motives. And their ulterior motive is to stay here. They want to stay in America, man. They want to heal Babylon. Okay? First of all, the Heavenly Father said he has a kingdom set up for his people, man. That he already established from the beginning. Okay? And we're about to receive that kingdom. But you got wicked men that's in the way. Okay? But the scripture says none of the elect going to be deceived. So do you have some of the elect that's in them congregations? Of course you do. And when the most high is ready, he's going to extract them out. He's going to draw them out. All right? But to others, that's a snare and a trap to you. Okay, that's a stumbling block, man. So at the end of the day, we understand prophecy. The reason why these false preachers are set up is to be a stumbling block to the people that the Heavenly Father do not want. Because at the end of the day, this is a secret. That's why the Lord spoke in parables and dark sayings. It's not meant for everybody to receive it. This is not meant for the world to receive it. That's why the Lord said, I drew you guys out of the world, man. He told that to his disciples on down. We're not a part of this world. That's why the world can't hear us. Even though we're bringing out the scriptures and we come out here in the open, they can't see what we're talking about. Because the Most High don't want them to see what we're talking about. 
Okay, he's the main instrument that blinded them from receiving the truth, man. So that, because if they hear the truth, they'll wake up and they'll be healed and they'll be converted. All right? But I'm going to read this for you guys, man. Ezekiel chapter 33. So when you take out from the book and you pervert the doctrine, this is what the scripture says, man. Ezekiel chapter 33. Ezekiel 33 and 6. Undercover, right? It says, But if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand, man. See? Read it again. Ezekiel 33 and 6. But if the watchmen see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, man. So we blowing the trumpet right now. I'm telling you what, America's going to be destroyed, man. That's 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 a part of the message, man. Esau is about to go down, man. Jacob's trouble is about to come. Martial law is about to come. The R5D chip is about to come. World War 3 is about to come. That's blowing the trumpet in Babylon, man. It says, And blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned. If the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. And it said, What? But my blood will I require at the watchman's hands, man. Meaning what? You guys that are supposed to be leaders, man. You're supposed to be watchmen over the flock. Okay, that's what the scripture says, stand upon a high tower and watch, man. And let them know that the wolf is coming. Verse 7, see, but you guys are not shepherds.